All right, guys, Sunday, February 14th, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm out spending some quality time here with my sweetheart, my 1968 Triumph TR250. Thanks to all of you that uh, joined in on the YouTube uh, premiere uh, video viewing this morning of us, uh, Alina and I, getting the uh, body tub and chassis made it up yesterday. It was a lot of fun. Big milestone as far as the project is concerned. So I'm actually rejuvenated and excited, let's say, to uh, work on this next part of the project. I always enjoy the assembly phase, and that's where we're at now. So, first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, put, the uh, put the chassis sort of on a diagonal in the center of the garage and get it up on jack stands to get it at a better working height. And then we'll talk about uh, next steps and what we want to do. All right, the body tub is up on stands across the uh, center of the garage, so I've got nice... Uh, Access around it completely So that's looking good so First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the exhaust. I'm going to put these fasteners back on the hangers So uh, as far as the stick out is concerned, it looks pretty darn good Remember there's going to be a rear bumper on this car. So that is looking pretty much dead on I'd say I'm going to get under the car and I'm going to check for height and like I said I'm going to put these fasteners back in the hangers and see how close I can tuck it up to the bottom of the uh, spare tire uh, compartment without getting too close. All right, we'll All do right, just under the car and uh, we've got the soft mounts mounted for the exhaust at the rear and you can see there's just enough clearance to get that uh, rubber mount in on the middle location basically so I'm not sure if I want to go up any higher yet on the exhaust. I'll have to uh, wait and see until I get the bumper installed but there is an ability to move it up one more if need be that might require me to uh, shorten the hard mounts on the differential though. So just wanted to give you a quick look at that. Looking good. So I'll move on to the next little uh, project. All right guys, this is where those uh, power hours pay off again. So I think the first thing I want to do is probably install the pedal box just to get that out of the way. So we've already restored the pedal box. It's sitting over here, so that's ready to go. Uh, brake master, uh, our brake booster is already done and ready to go. The solenoid is done and ready to go. If you recall, we've got the heater box here, which we're not going to put in now, but I just pulled it out just to sit it uh, handy. And a few more bits over here, the uh, wheel box covers for the wipers and the uh, dip switch. So I'm just going through bins. Uh, I already cleaned out two bins, so that's good. So uh, what I'm going to do first, though, before I put that pedal box in, is I'm just going to give this a quick buff just with a compound. I'm not going to sand it. I'm just going to compound it and polish it because there are going to be uh, screws that hold that pedal box in and I won't be able to do it afterwards. So we'll just give that a really quick uh, whirl with the uh, buffer and we're not going to go too crazy. Again, the windshield wiper motor covers this whole location back in here. So you really only see a very small amount of this anyway. So we'll just buff it while we can. Uh, before it becomes too difficult with all those uh, bolts. All right, just about getting ready to uh, install the pedal box. Uh, that area is all buffed up and it's uh, better than it was. Again, it's not perfect, but good enough for the engine bay. We're not going to go crazy. Uh, so the pedal box is here. We've got uh, the hardware just sitting out. There's the original hardware. Uh, and here is my all new stainless steel hardware. I am going to use stainless steel where I can, uh, where I want to. Uh, and this is one of the locations, as I'd mentioned previously, that I want to because those uh, tops of those bolts are pretty uh, visible when you look in the engine bay and uh, I definitely don't want those to start rusting. Normally they would be painted, I believe, uh, but we're going to go with the stainless steel variety. We're going to try to use as much stainless as we can in non-stressed areas. Um, so there you go. Let's get uh, one more thing I should mention about the pedal box. So um, I think normally they put a little bit of sealer around at least the uh, screw holes here on the bottom of the, um, the uh, pedal box. So I've got some seam sealer. We're going to apply a little bit of seam sealer before we actually stick this up. So this would basically go like this inside up against the, uh, the bulkhead and then the brake master cylinder and the clutch master go through there. So anyway, we're going to add a little bit of silicone to the, uh, not silicone, but seam sealer around the uh, bolt hole locations as per, I think, the factory. All right, there's what I'm using for seam sealer, just a uh, Dominion Sure Seal brand. Uh, it's white, not like you're gonna see it. So uh, there you go. Uh, we're just about ready to stick that in there. So this could get a little messy. 
Anyway, we'll do the best we can. At least we can get uh, hopefully one bolt started and then we can get all the, the uh, others in and uh, make a nice clean job of it. Alright, easy as that. The pedal box is in. Just a quick note, make sure that you've got your two uh, clutch uh, master bolts aligned before you tighten anything down on top. There is a little bit of var variation in the fitment, so make sure you push that over. Make sure you pull it forward, the pedal box as forward, far forward as you can. And obviously you want to uh, have the bolts lined up for the clutch master as well. So, pedal box is in. There you go. Let's go for a drive. Alright, next thing I think I'll do is uh, we'll mount our new washer bottle and bracket that goes into this location here. So I've got three roll nuts to go in here. This is where the tubing and the wiring runs through. So we'll go ahead and mount that now with the understanding that it'll probably at least have to remove the bottle out of the bracket to get uh, the wing vents in and out. Uh, so just a quick word on the wing vents. Some of you have been asking. So no, these are not stock to the car. These were cut in by me. And uh, Elin gave me a hand actually doing this. So um, these were sort of a facsimile of the TR4 uh, factory works rally cars. Uh, so I quite like the look of them, so I'm putting them in this car. Having said that, um, I'm not going to be able to final fit those until the fenders go on because that's going to dictate the way that the um, tubes fit in. The plan is that uh, we're going to put riv nuts in to secure those, but I can't actually put them in place until the fenders are on and those are pushed through the fenders. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, anyway, temporarily we'll at least install the uh, washer bottle bracket and the washer bottle just to get it out of the parts bin. Don't you hate when vendors do things like this? You're probably going to hear me do a little rant now and again when I go to assemble this car. But some things just drive me crazy. So these are the package parts, let's say, to put this bracket on. So the roll nuts come with the screws like this. The washers are sold separately, so I've purchased the washers. So now I'm going to try to fix the bracket using the roll nuts. And this screw here will not go through the bracket. So I'm going to have to drill the bracket to get it to the size of this screw that's supplied with the bracket. The other thing that's interesting is it's actually a hex headed uh, fastener which you would never have found obviously on a Triumph. Um, rare to even see something like a Phillips fastener so anyway that's not concourse. <laughs> not that I'm going for that but I just thought that's kind of odd that to be supplying uh, hex headed fasteners. Alright washer bottle is in and I've always kind of got questions although it doesn't really matter too much but there's two ways to put this bottle in since it's both embossed on the back side and the front side. So technically you could have the fill port over here on the inside. So I was trying to get a reference as to where this should be. Anyway, I think it should be like this. This is the wrong top. If you remember the discussion I've had previously, this should be the square top motor. So uh, this is the wrong motor for this bottle anyway. But we're going to go with it. It's a later style replacement from the TR6. Obviously you need to still replace this hose here that's pretty kinked. Got a brand new piece of hose here, although we need to go back and add the grommet for it. I have a grommet kit for this car for all the entire firewall, so we'll go back through and we'll add the grommets at a later date. But uh, anyway, I just want to give you a quick shot of that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, solenoid, which uh, is here in my pocket. So here's the solenoid, and that goes over here, something like that. Attaches like that, so we'll grab the hardware for that and we'll right, put that on the car. Solenoid's now installed. The only thing I need to check is the orientation of the spade connectors. There's one large one here and a small one in the center of the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. So we're going to check to make sure that we have that uh, large spade facing up and the small spacing down. Otherwise, we'll flip it and we'll reinstall it. So that's another thing done. Let's go and do the overflow bottle and bracket which I have sitting over here I just grabbed from inside so here's the overflow bottle um, I'm missing the lid I have a feeling I might have borrowed that for my TR6 <laughs> so we'll see if I can find the original bottle for this car and see what the lid is uh, looking like and maybe I'll have to clean it up and paint it and we've got this uh, blingy uh, chrome bottle holder I believe this is from uh, British Parts Northwest so stainless steel and we'll install that. That goes just here on the inner fender. Uh, a couple bolt holes there. We'll just uh, bolt that up. Get that out of the way. Alright, the blingy bottle bracket's now installed. Here's the new bottle. 
see if it fits. And it does. So again, we'll find a lid for that. And that will go into there, something like that. All right, next job, let's find something else. All right, next we've got these uh, front valence support bars. And technically these are supposed to be blue. I've painted them black by mistake, but to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna leave them black since I have a black valve cover. I think it'll go okay with the black valve cover. Uh, the hinges are supposed to be uh, body colored as well. I have those painted black. Headlight buckets are black. So anyway, uh, I think we're gonna just go ahead with the black on this, not being lazy or anything. I just think it will probably look okay. Do a bit of a theme in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll attach these um, front valence support brackets. All right, if you remember from last week when I was doing a little bit of a power hour out in the garage and I was just uh, exchanging old fasteners for new fasteners, that's again where this comes into play. So we've got uh, the bag with the brand new fasteners in place. So bag within a bag, let me just unpack this. So are there the old tube fasteners and there are the brand new stainless steel ones we've got ready to go. So again, gonna be a bit of a time saver now having to try to find fasteners so we're good to go we'll just bolt those right on all right those support tubes are on and i think they just look fine uh, being black the radiator's black too so i think we're going to continue on and i think we got to go back in the house now and uh, grab some more parts so let's go grab our uh, brake master cylinder our pdwa um, our clutch master cylinder and uh, We'll bring those out and we'll figure out if we've got enough stuff to install those. All right, just did a, a little parts run inside. So I've got my PDWA. Uh, I've got a new uh, clutch master here. We've got a new uh, brake master over here. And uh, I managed to bring out all my little grommet uh, kits and my emergency, or not my emergency, but my bonnet release cable there as well. So all the grommet kits are in there. Brake master there, brake boost over there. So let's put these on. Put the clutch sleeve on first, or the clutch master on first. All right, the clutch master is now installed with its hard pipe, and this does not look like it's running in the right route. It should go over, I think, something like this, but we'll figure that out. It did come off uh, either my TR6 or off this car, I can't remember, but we're gonna reuse it, it's still in good shape. So that connects up to this line down here, but there's a fitting that I have somewhere that I've gotta find. This fitting is about $30, I believe. Oh, I'm hooked. Ah, uh, there's those <laughs> wiring, wiring, oh there we go, wiring harness ties. Anyway, so yeah, so we'll find that fitting and we'll figure out the run of this. I'm pretty sure there's a little clamp that holds this down somewhere as well. We do need to leave room for that PDWA, um, which bolts in here. So anyway, we'll figure out what goes where. We'll just leave that here for now. Good idea to put the line on before you actually screw the master into the firewall. It's a little bit easier access that way. Um, so let's go to brake booster. All right, just getting ready to uh, install the booster and just wanted to mention that uh, a little bit of seam sealer on the back of that as well. So we're about uh, ready to go. We've got our uh, nuts standing by. So we'll uh, pop that in there and get under the dash and uh, fasten it up. All right, there brake we go. booster is in. So let's go ahead and attach the uh, master. We'll unpack that and we'll get that on the car. All right, just coming to the end of the night out here. And uh, last thing I did was install the PDWA uh, for the brakes. And that's all hooked up brake line wise up to the master cylinder and to the junction below. I'm not going to put the um, wiper motor on just yet. I'm still waiting on a uh, wheel box fitting kit including the uh, jets and the bezels for the wipers and those are back ordered so that's going to have to wait um, what else do we do clutch master we put those radiator or the uh, valence rods on we put the uh, over overflow bottle and bracket on we put the washer bottle on put the pedal um, the pedals in put the solenoid on so that's a pretty good day i would say so it's a holiday here tomorrow so we'll get out here bright and early and we'll continue on putting on the parts that we have. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.